Hi everyone! Today we're going to start our adventure with weight painting. Weight painting is a bit of an art form, and it can be a massive pain in the rear. Or it can be as easy as pushing a couple of buttons. It all depends on the outfit and the situation that you are working with. It's important to get this right, so we're going to be spending some time on this one. Here's what we're going to discuss today. In this basics video, we're mostly going to cover which buttons to press. That will get you pretty far, but it may not be enough. So in the follow-up video to this one, I'll go over more tips and specific circumstances that may help you to get the results you want. Ultimately, your success is going to depend on the situation and on how much patience you have. We briefly discussed rigging and skinning in a previous video, and I referred you to an article on the subject, which I will link again in this video's description. These terms refer to the process of making a mesh respond to movement. Your mesh is really just a solid cage with some pictures painted on top of it. It won't bend or move on its own. So we attach it to a skeleton, the skeleton gets animated, and our mesh moves along with it. You really don't need to worry about this magical invisible skeleton, other than to make sure you have the right one listed here in Outfit Studio settings. It should be correct by default, so don't change this unless you know what you are doing. To attach your mesh to the skeleton, you associate the vertices of the mesh to different bones. Each vertex must be associated with one bone at a minimum, or, for Skyrim, up to four bones as a maximum. And that's what weight painting is all about, associating the vertices of your mesh to the bones of the skeleton. In Outfit Studio, you can see how the vertices of your meshes are associated with the bones, i.e. how they are weight painted, by selecting the Bones tab. Here is a list of all the bones that are present across all the meshes that you have loaded. Green means that bone is used in the mesh or meshes that you currently have selected. If you click on one of the green bone names, you will see your mesh light up in a rainbow of colors. This is showing you which parts of the mesh will move when that bone moves. The colors represent strength. Red means it's going to move a lot when that bone moves. Blue means it will only move a little. And all the colors in between show the relative degree of movement according to the standard color spectrum. Many vertices should be attached to more than one bone so they will have a natural movement pattern. For example, notice how this part of the mesh is weighted to both the thigh bone and the calf bone. I suggest using real life as a guiding principle when you are weight painting your outfits. Try to envision how the outfit would move along with the body and weight the vertices accordingly. Don't fret if you struggle with this. It takes practice. Luckily, you don't always need to worry about weight painting. If you are making minor changes to outfits in Outfit Studio, or even some types of major changes, then you usually don't have to do anything with weighting. As a default, I suggest not re-weighting unless you know it is required. So how do you know when it's required? Here are some times when you should absolutely tweak or even completely redo the weight painting of the mesh. When you move a mesh or vertices more than slightly. When you resize a mesh, such that it now covers more or less of the body than it did before. When you convert a mesh to a different body type, like UNP to CBBE or Vanilla to Himbo. When you see weird behavior in the game, especially if your outfit deforms oddly during movement. When you have unresolved clipping, especially with movement, and after a reasonable amount of inflating or deflating the meshes hasn't fixed it. And obviously, when you start with an unweighted mesh, like maybe a static NIF or an OBJ or FBX file. 
This list is not all inclusive, but it's a good place to start. In Outfit Studio, there are three main weight painting functions. You can copy weights from any other mesh, you can transfer weights from an identical mesh, and you can manually paint the vertices to a selected bone. We'll talk about each of these in detail, but here is a high-level summary. Use copy weights when you have an unweighted mesh or when most of your mesh needs to be re-weight painted. You can use any mesh that is already weighted as your source for copying. Transfer weights is most useful when you have one size of the mesh all weighted perfectly and you need to make the other size match. You can only transfer weights when the vertex count and vertex order are identical between the two meshes. Manual weight painting is typically only done on a pre-painted mesh that just needs some touching up. You could manually paint the entire mesh from scratch, but I can't really think of a good reason why you wouldn't start off by copying a similar mesh first and then just optimize it manually. Let's do an example of each one of these so that you can see how they work. For copying bone weights, you need to identify a weighted mesh as the source and then you will copy that mesh's bone weights onto your new mesh. You will often see instructions telling you to use the naked body as your source, but this is not the only way, and it's not always the best way. Generally speaking, you'll want to choose a source mesh that is similar in shape and movement to your new item, and we'll talk more about that in our next video. For now, to keep this simple, we are going to work with our new Demo Jeans mesh. If you do not have that mesh and you want to follow along, please download it from the Miscellaneous Files section of the Simply for Practice mod. Refer back to video number 28 if you need some help doing that. These jeans are already weight painted, but we're going to undo that and redo it for this exercise. Drag and drop the size zero jeans into Outfit Studio. To remove all weight painting, go to Edit and select Remove Skinning. Be aware that this will remove weights from every mesh that you have loaded into Outfit Studio. So do this before you bring in your source for copying. If you look at the jeans before and after doing this step, you can see how there are no bones associated with the mesh once we have removed the skinning. Since the jeans sit very close to the naked body and should move right along with it, this is an example where it makes sense to use the body itself for copying bone weights. Normally, I would bring in the actual female underscore zero NIF from the body mod that I'm making the outfit for. However, in our case, I'm actually going to use the demo top this is because A, you might not have the UNP body and couldn't follow along, and B, the SSE version of the UNP body has slightly different weighting in the legs than the LE version that this outfit is based on. And C, these jeans are made to go with this top, so it only makes sense that they should work well together. So, with the caveat that you'll generally want to use a pure body NIF from your body mod for this step, Let's go ahead and disregard our own advice and bring in the size zero demo top NIF. I recommend matching sizes here because the closer your mesh sits to the source mesh that we are copying from, the better the results will be. From here, we just push some buttons. Select your source mesh, the UNP push-up body in our case, right click and select hit reference. The source you want to copy from should now be colored green in the mesh list. Now right click on your target, this is the mesh you want to copy to, and select copy bone weights. A pop-up window will appear with some options that we can change. Usually the defaults work fine, so I suggest trying that first. You can always redo this weight painting step and try other options if you aren't happy with the results. Search radius is basically how far out it will go when copying weights from one vertex to another. Max vertex targets refers to the spread, 
you would rarely, if ever, need to change this from the default of four. You can see the body slide wiki for more information on that. So we're gonna go ahead with the default values. Click OK. And now if you go to the Bones tab, you can see which bones, shown in green text, have been applied to these genes. And that's it. You can now export the mesh just like you'd normally do, but don't do that just yet. Please move on to the next step first. After copying weights to these genes, we are ready to export it as a new NIF. Let's do that now because I want to show you what happens when some vertices do not have any weights. Right click on our genes and select export to NIF. You should see a warning pop up which tells us that some of the shapes or meshes in this NIF have unweighted vertices. This can happen when you have some vertices that are too far away from the source shape and so no weights are copied to those parts. Notice how Outfit Studio has kindly masked those vertices for us so that we can see which ones they are. Click No to exit this pop-up. We definitely do not want to export meshes with unweighted vertices if we intend to put them into the game. Turn on the pencil so we can see the problem vertices. They will show up in red because they have been masked. From here, we have several ways to fix this. First, Invert the mask so the rest of our mesh will be left alone. We can now manually paint these, which we will cover in a bit. We can copy weights again and increase the radius, and it will only weight the unmasked vertices now. We could scrap this entire thing since copying weights cannot be undone, bring in the meshes again and repaint the whole thing with a larger radius, which is definitely overkill, or we can select specific bones and just copy those. Let's do the latter to show how that works. We can tell by looking at this mesh that these vertices should be weighted to the calves, like all those around them. The right calf for the right side and the left calf for the left side. So on the bones tab, select L calf, then hold control and click on R calf. Both should be highlighted in the list. Back on the Meshes tab, right-click on the genes and select Copy Selected Weights. This works pretty much like the full copying, except it will only use the bones that we've selected on the list. We still need to increase the radius to make sure it gets these vertices on the bottom. And I know from playing around with this that six is not quite enough, so let's go with seven, and we can just type that in the box here and hit OK. Now we can check by clearing the mask so we can see better and then selecting each of the calf bones. That looks good. So now we can export and I suggest not overriding the original when you are redoing weight painting. You might need to revert back a few times until you get things right. Recall from our video about NIFs that weight painting is one of the unbreakable rules for size 0 and size 1 NIFs. The bones painted to all the vertices should be identical between the two sizes or it can break the weight sliding for this outfit in the game. Fortunately, this is very easy to do. For any two meshes that have identical vertex counts and vertex order, we can simply transfer weights from one mesh to the other. Let's do that now for the genes. We reweighted the size 0 genes, and we need to copy this over to size 1 so that they match. With the size 0 genes already loaded in, drag and drop the size 1 genes into Outfit Studio. The size 0 genes are our new source mesh, so first, right click on them and select Set Reference. Then select the size one jeans mesh. Before we do the transfer, have a quick look at the bones tab. Any mesh set as the reference will automatically show its weight painting when you select a bone, as will any other meshes that you have selected on the meshes tab. It's hard to tell because the differences are very subtle, but our size zero and size one jeans do not have exactly the same weight painting anymore. And notice how, for example, the size 1 jeans have some vertices weighted to the foot, 
while our newly reweighted size 0 genes do not. This is going to cause us problems in the game, and that's why we need to do the transfer weight step to make sure both of these sizes match. Before we can use the transfer weight function, we first need to select all the bones on this list. Click on the top bone, scroll down and hold down shift before clicking on the bottom bone. The whole list should now be highlighted. Back on the meshes tab, make sure the target mesh, which is our size one genes in this case, is selected. Then right click and select transfer selected weights. If you check on the bones tab now, you can see that the foot bones are no longer being used and all the weighting matches between our reference, which is the size zero genes, and our target, which is the size one genes. And now we can just export the size one genes as normal. And again, be sure not to overwrite the original for this exercise. So we've covered how to copy bone weights from one mesh to another, and that is often enough to make things work pretty well. But sometimes you'll have to fine tune your mesh a bit more than that. And this is where you'll want to use manual weight painting. In Outfit Studio, it's very easy to do. Just select your mesh, click on the Bones tab, choose a bone from the list, and then use your mouse to brush over the mesh. Brushing works just like all the other brush functions in Outfit Studio. You can change the radius, the strength, etc. Then you can mask vertices by selecting the Masking tool. Then go back to weight painting by selecting this little icon that looks like a purse with a white paintbrush. And I know it's a picture of a weight, but it looks like a purse to me. If you have a reference mesh and it's getting in your way, just go back to the Meshes tab Right click on it and select set reference again to toggle it back off. Then you can just select the one mesh you want to see and go back to the bones tab to paint some more. Painting with your mouse will add strength to the area for the bone that you have selected. And if you hold down alt while you're painting, it will remove strength. You can only paint one bone at a time with one exception. If you are working on a symmetrical bone, like a left or a right version, you can use the X mirror bone option here to paint both sides at the same time. For example, I'm painting the right thigh, and I would like the left thigh to have the same changes. So I select L thigh in the X mirror bone dropdown, and note that this will now auto select for other symmetrical bones once you have told Outfit Studio that you want to use this functionality for the first time. Manual weight painting is where real artistry happens. I am no expert at this, so I end up doing trial and error until it works the way I want. Be sure to watch the next section about using the pose function. It can help you tremendously during this process. A tip here for weight painting you usually want smooth color transitions, except where sharp bending happens. And if your mesh does not fit tightly against the body, be very thoughtful about how it would move in real life. For example, a skirt will not move precisely with the lower butt cheeks, the crotch, or the legs. Remember too that for Skyrim, you cannot paint one vertex to more than four bones as a max. I have not really run into this problem, but I know some people do, so just be aware of that. You can play around with using the Normalized Weights option here to help with that. And you can also use the Fixed Weight brush to apply the same exact strength across all the vertices that you brush. Lastly, remember that the bones are all working together, so you usually can't focus on just one bone and ignore all the rest. Check which other bones are affecting the same area and play with the relative strengths of them all to get the movement looking right. Basically, the only way to master manual weight painting is to do lots and lots and lots of it on a wide variety of meshes so that you get plenty of experience seeing how it all works. I say this often, but I will say it again. 
Just get into Outfit Studio and start playing around with it. The more weight painting you do, the more it will make sense. Something that can help tremendously with weight painting in Outfit Studio is the Pose function. In the Bones tab, there is a bottom panel that you can open up by clicking the little arrow next to Posing. Here, if you tick the Show Pose box, you can choose Bones in the drop-down menu right here, and then use the sliders below it to move the bone around and see how your mesh moves along with it. You can weight paint while the mesh is posed, so that you can see how tweaking the weight painting changes the mesh in real time, which is super helpful. Definitely make liberal use of this functionality. It will save you a lot of headache, since you don't have to keep going in and out of the game to see what's happening. To help streamline your weight painting efforts, you can also create and save your own poses, and these will be available every time you open Outfit Studio. I have a few poses that I have made, attempting to recreate some of the more common and or troublesome animations in Skyrim. These poses are not perfect, but they do the job pretty well for what I have needed to do so far. If you're interested, I've included them as a miscellaneous download in the Simply for Practice mod. Just manually download the file, then extract the contents to the Caliente Tools, Body Slide, and Pose Data folder. The next time you open up Outfit Studio, they should be available in this drop-down menu. And please, feel free to make more changes to these poses and save them as your own versions. So that's it for our first dive into weight painting. Hopefully this gets you started, and the rest is mostly practice and, unfortunately, trial and error until you learn what works. Next time, I'll cover some additional tips and specific situations that you might run into. Until then, just jump in with both feet and give it a try. You can do it, but be patient with yourself. Weight painting is not easy. I will see you again soon for the follow-up video. Bye!